Welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God. And today I have a message for you from the Lord that has three scriptures. The first is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 through 14 in the New International Version Bible. It reads, No, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understand it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things of God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak not in words taught uh, taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual re- realities with spiritual with spirit taught words. The spirit without the the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The meaning, the Spirit of the world is limited to understanding and believing in only what can be observed with the senses. Christians have exchanged that Spirit for God's Spirit given to each person who comes to God through faith in Christ. Paul's work was to use human words but not bear human wisdom. To those who believe so that they could understand them more, more fully, those who are not helped by God's Holy Spirit are simply unable to comprehend anything spiritual. That's why they reject as foolish the things of God's Spirit, including the truth of Christ, of Christ crucified for human sinfulness through the Holy Spirit. We have access to... to the mind of Christ. The second scripture is Psalm chapter 14, Psalm 14, verse 7. In the New International Version Bible, it reads, Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. The meaning, David continues the description of the foolish persecutors of God's people. The focus shifts from their evil works to God's judgment and Israel's hope of deliverance. The third scripture is Matthew chapter 24 verses 19 through 32 and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is 
in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is there, will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and put of forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Now for the message received from the Lord on November the 2nd, 2021. I am on the move for a natural disaster is at your doorstep, America. You will know once the shaking begins. It will last longer and be more violent than a normal earthquake would be. You will know when it happens for all of your technology will stop functioning. This will be a key indicator of an impending earthquake. Do not go into fear for fear is of the enemy. Begin praying and asking me for a hedge of protection around your home. For you will have it, my beloved. As long as you believe on me, not anything will be able to harm a hair on your head. You may be a little shaken up, and in parentheses I have, excuse the pun, but you will be fine. Your home may sustain damage, but you will be fine. Please heed my words, for the judgments are about to begin. Do not worry. The Father wishes for all of his children to come home to him. So this is why these calamities will fall. He does not want any of his children to perish in the lake of fire. Sadly, this is the last resort for so many do not truly understand the times in which they are living. These disasters will bring many back into faith under God. Continue abiding in me with praise, worship, and prayer. Read my word, for you will see the prophecies become fulfilled right before your very eyes. With undying love, Jesus of Nazareth. So this is a message of a great earthquake to come and disasters and judgments to come. And it's a warning message. And Jesus is pleading with you to come back to the faith so that you will not be left behind when he comes at his second coming. And it talks about in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 through 14, about how the spirit within us is the spirit of God. And the person without the spirit does not accept these things from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness. So it's like we have the mind of Christ once we repent and are baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit within us. And then we can have discernment over what is coming in these next days, hours, and moments ahead of us in these disaster judgments that are going to befall upon America so that he can bring back more people into the faith. And in Psalm 14, verse 7, it talks about, Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. It's David's description of the foolish persecutors of God's people and also talks about that 
the focus shifts from the evil works to God's judgment and Israel's hope of deliverance. So delivering the people of God, which in, in Psalm, in this Psalm, David is depicting Israel as God's people and through the judgments that are going to happen to the wicked that the people will cling unto him because they will believe that he is truly real and come back to the faith and in Matthew Matthew 24 I suggest if you haven't picked up your Bible in a while read that chapter because it's telling you about what's going to be happen happening in the final days and I'm not going to reread it but there's a lot of key indicators about the judgments that are going to happen and about the coming the second coming of the son of man and when the trumpet blows that he will be coming and he will send his angels and they will gather together his elect from one end of heaven to the other to bring in the harvest of the people who are lukewarm and lost. So this is the message for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Uh, the more people that like it, it will go into those people's feeds who really need to hear it and come back to the Lord. I would really love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. I pray for each and every one of my viewers and subscribers daily for Jesus' blood protection over your life to protect you from harm from the enemy. If you have any questions and or prayer requests, please send me an email at my email address, which is listed down below in the description box. And thank you, and please come back to the Lord now, for time is very short. May God bless you.